let's have a look at some enlargement exam style questions. So I've got a question here, it says, enlarge the shape below scale factor two about the point six minus three. So in questions where they ask you to enlarge a shape, there are two really important pieces of information. There's the scale factor, and there's the centre of enlargement, so the coordinates they give you that they want you to enlarge about. Step one, when you get an enlargement question, is to mark on this centre of enlargement. So the point six minus three in this case, so six minus three is here, so I'm going to do a cross for the centre, and let's mark that six minus three. Step two is you want to draw lots of lines on your grid. And these are lines that are going to go through the centre of enlargement, so this cross here, and one of the corners of the shape. Let's do that here. So we want to go a line going through here, and let's take this corner of the shape, this vertex. So let's go like this. Uh, make these lines as long as possible. So let's do another one going through this corner. So this corner and this cross here. And which other ones we can do? You don't have to do all of them, but the more you do, the more helpful it is. So let's do this one here. And finally, let's do this one here. Okay, so we've drawn lots of straight lines going through this point and the corners of the shape. So now we want to draw the enlarged shape. And when it asks us to enlarge by a scale factor of two, that basically means we're scaling everything up about the shape by a factor of two. So we're sort of doubling everything. So for instance, this side length in this shape here is two squares, so it's two units long. So if we're gonna increase this by a scale factor of two, if we're gonna double it, we now want the new shape to have a side length of four. What's really helpful about these lines that we've drawn is that in our new shape, the, this bottom corner here and this top corner have to stay on these lines. So this new side that we're gonna draw of length four has got to be sandwiched in between these lines here. So we wanna look across this set of lines and see where can we draw a straight vertical line that's of length four. So like here, that's a bit weird, it's not properly on squares. And um, here's about three and a bit. Um, that's not quite four either, but this one is looking good. That's length of one, two, three, four. Um, it's a tiny bit off, but I think that's from my line drawing more than anything. So you can see that's about length four and, and is on corners of the grid, which I think for most exam questions, certainly for GCSE, that should be a good indicator that you've got the right section. So here you've got one, two, three, four. So that's going to be the side of our new shape. So let's draw that in. same method applies for all the sections of the shape. So for instance, this top bit here is of um, length one, one square. And so in our new shape, because we're increasing by a scale factor of two, it needs to be two times as big. So in our new shape, it's going to be of length two. And again, this side needs to be um, sandwiched in between these two lines. If we go across here, we see our oh, where is this going to be of length two? So here it's like just over one. Here it's almost two, but here is two. And this makes sense because in our new shape, it's got to be just an enlarged version of this original one. So we want this side to join onto this one. So we can see that this is of length two, so twice that, it's sandwiched in between the right lines, and it works well with what we've got so far. So we can sort of fill in the shape just from this information now because you can kind of see where it's going to go. But I'll just keep going to show you. So like this bottom edge here is length three and our new shape needs to be length six and needs to be sandwiched in between these two lines. And you can see uh, like which one is six. This one is six here. So if we draw. So this one's of length one. So in our new shape will be times two. So length two sandwiched in between these top two green lines. So that's going to be here. And we didn't draw a line going through that point there, but I think we can fill in the rest of the shape now. So that bit's of length one, so here it's going to be length two. And this bit's of length two, so here it's going to be length four. So this is our new shape. And you can see it kind of makes sense. It's twice as big. All the, the lengths of the sides are twice as big. It's sandwiched correctly in between the lines. It's not like randomly floating anywhere else. 
And another way you can check actually is with enlargements, all distances are going the scale factor away from this centre of enlargement. So the length from this, this cross here to the corner here is going to be two times that of the length from here to the corner of this one. So everything is being increased by a factor of two, both the side lengths and also the distances. So that's another way you can check you've got the right shape. Okay, let's try another question. So in this question, we want to enlarge the shape by a scale factor of a half about the origin. So if the scale factor is less than one, you're shrinking the shape. So you're making things half as big. So I always think the word enlarge is a bit strange because normally you think enlarge means always make bigger. But in this case, it can also mean make smaller. So when the scale factor is less than one, when it says enlarge, it's going to actually make the shape smaller. Let's do the same method we did before. So we're enlarging it about the origin. So the origin is the point zero, zero. So let's do across here for the origin. Okay, and our step two was to draw loads of lines. So again, each straight line you want to go through the origin and also a corner of the shape. So let's do this corner. And let's do this corner. And finally, this last corner. Try and make these lines as big as possible. Okay, so now we've done that, our step three is to enlarge it by a scale factor a half. So because it's a half, it's going to be half as far from the centre of enlargement, the origin, than this triangle here. So it's going to be somewhere in this section here. Whereas if it was bigger than one, it would be enlarged out here somewhere. But because it's a half, it's going to be half as far, so it's going to be somewhere in this section. Okay, so let's look at a side of the triangle. So if we look at this bottom side here, because we're enlarging it by a half, that actually means we're making it half as big. So half of two is one. So we want to find a place sandwiched between these two lines that has length one. So if we look at these um, different horizontal lines, you can see, okay, here is exactly one between these lines. So that's going to be the base of the triangle. Now, if we look at this edge here, here it's got length one, two, three, four. Because we're enlarging it by a half, we want it to be half as big, so we want it to be of length two. So we want to look sandwiched between these two lines, length two. And you can see that's going to be here. And then you don't need to really worry about matching this side length between the lines, because you can see to complete the triangle, we need it to go here. So there we go. So this is enlarged by scale factor a half about the origin. So all of the lengths in this small triangle are half as long as the ones on the original triangle. And also the distances from the centre of enlargement, the origin, are half as big. So half as long to get from the origin to this point as it is to get from the origin to this point. So all the distances have been halved. So that shape is the answer. Let's now look at a different style of question. This question asks us to describe fully the transformation taking shape A to shape B. So there are four key transformations that usually crop up, especially in GCSEs. But you can see here quite clearly, whatever's happened in this transformation, the shape has changed size. In this case, it's got bigger. And the only one of our four transformations that can do that is enlargements. So we know straight away that this is an enlargement that's happening. So in your answer, you're going to get one mark for saying enlargement. So we also need to find out the two important pieces of information about enlargements. So those are um, scale factor and the centre of enlargement. So in order to find out those two pieces of information, we sort of need to reverse the process of what we did before. Because what the examiner has done, they've got their original shape, they've chosen the centre of enlargement somewhere, they've drawn lines and drawn the new shape. So we want to do that backwards. So now the first thing to do is to draw the lines to try and find out where that centre of enlargement was. We want to draw lines going from a corner of one of the shapes and also through the same corner of the other shape. So like this top left corner here and this top left corner here. So we want the matching corners. We want to draw straight lines through them. And so also this corner matches with this corner. So we can draw a straight line through this. This corner matches with this one. 
then this corner matches with this one. Okay, so you can see that all of these lines, they sort of converge together at a point, this point here. So this point is going to be the centre of enlargement, and this point has coordinates minus 6, minus 6. So we've sort of done the reverse, whereas the examiner would have had to draw this point minus 6, minus 6, and then draw straight lines going from this point through the corners of A to make shape B. We've had to do some detective work and draw the lines going between shape A and B, see where they meet, and that we know that that was the point of enlargement around which the question was made. So we've earned ourselves a second mark because we can say that the enlargement has centre minus 6, minus 6. Finally, we need to say what the scale factor is. So that's how much the size has changed by. So to do that, we can just look at a side of our original shape. So let's say this left hand side here has got side length 2. And if we look at the corresponding side on shape B, so the left hand side, this has got length 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it's gone from 2 to 6. And so that is timesing by 3. So we think now that this is going to be um, scale factor 3 because all the lengths have been timed by 3. So we can just double check that with another length. So this bottom one has got length 1. In this one, it's got length 1, 2, 3. So again, multiplied by 3. There are other ways you can check it also. So you can look at the distance here, measure that with a ruler, and then measure this distance with a ruler, and you'll find that this distance is 3 times the length of this one. So all the distances here have been made 3 times as big. So finally, we can get our third mark by saying scale factor three. In an exam, you'll always get one point for saying what type of transformation it is. So don't forget to say this is an enlargement. And then with enlargements, there are always two bits of key information, the center of enlargement, and you draw lines to find those, and also the scale factor, how much the size has changed by. So now you can answer two different types of enlargement questions. You can answer it where They've given you the information and asked you to draw the new shape. And you can also reverse back the question and find out if you're given two shapes that, and one is an enlargement of the other, you can find out the centre of enlargement and the scale factor. There's one type of enlargement we didn't cover here, which was negative scale factors. So watch the next video if you're interested in finding out what to do if you have a negative scale factor. Thanks for watching. Here's another video I think you'll like. Here's another video YouTube thinks you'll like. I have no idea what it is, maybe it's good, maybe it's not, who knows? If you like this video and want to see more aesthetic messy videos, do check out my channel and subscribe!